All right, buckle up. We're going over the worst hair habits that I see in my clients because most hair care advice comes from back in the 1980s. The world has changed a lot since then and so has hair care. So let's give your hair habits the 2023 upgrade. Using the wrong brush. It still absolutely shocks me that so many of my clients are damaging their hair by using the wrong brush for the wrong things. Last year, my mom and I went to go see a Coldplay concert in Tampa. She loves their lead singer, Chris Martin, and they put on a really great show, and yeah, I like it too. Leave me alone, whatever. But bringing this all back to brushes, my mom and I were staying in the same hotel room, and she's over there like doing her hair in the mirror. And keep in mind, I haven't seen my mom do her hair since like back in high school, so I have absolutely no idea what her routine is. But she walks over to me as she's detangling her hair to ask me a question. As soon as I saw her, I yelled, what are you doing? Put that thing down. Never ever detangle with the comb. It's absolutely horrifying. I'll tell you why in just a second, but number two, I realized that it wasn't my mom's fault that she was using a comb. It was actually my fault. I moved out, got into the hair industry, opened my own salon, and even got brushes that would have been perfect for her, and I never once went back to teach the mama the right way to do this stuff. I'm a bad son, okay? But in my defense, my mom never listens to anything that I say ever. Maybe you know what that feels like. Anyway, I show her that when you're detangling your hair, the main thing that you really need to watch out for is breakage. And if you're using one of these combs and it catches a tangle, it's gonna blow right through it and break your hair. Yes, technically you can go really slowly with this thing and you might not catch a tangle too hard that often, but eventually one of these days you're gonna mess up and snap your hair off when you're not paying attention or just going too fast. And let's be real, you're usually in a rush, like hurry up and detangle hair, I don't have time for all this. And for that reason, you should be using a wet brush. It doesn't have to be this brand, anything like this is completely fine as long as it has flexible bristles. That's the really important part. Really, it's so important. Don't skip this. This guy, when he hits a tangle, the bristles are just gonna flex away instead of ripping right through it. That way you don't get any breakage and you can actually go a lot faster by doing it like that. And a quick bonus thing here, when you're detangling your hair, please start from the bottom, not the top. If you do start from the top, you're gonna pull the first tangle you hit down into another tangle. And then you're gonna be stuck with a double tangle there. And then you're gonna try and brush that one down into the next tangle, and it's just tangles on top of tangles all the way down. Not a double tangle. The dreaded double tangle. And that's an absolutely terrible experience. Start from the bottom and take them out one at a time instead of starting at the top, piling all of them on top of each other and making a super knot. <laughs> Moving on. Drying your hair wrong. You're probably thinking to yourself, like, how could I possibly dry my hair wrong? Like, what type of dummy is he talking to that's drying their hair wrong? But I need you to just go with me on this because it might be you. All right, so you've probably heard that your hair is in its weakest state when it's wet. And if that's news to you, basically water molecules weaken the bonds that hold your hair together so it can break more easily. And breakage is bad. Breaking your hair in half, not good. Don't do it. At the same time, don't be too scared of this like these TikTok extremists who are constantly making 10 videos a week about not even brushing your hair when it's wet because that's the silliest thing ever. People all across the globe are brushing wet hair right now and they're totally fine, just like you've been for your entire life. Think it through. But what's not totally fine is getting out of the shower with wet hair, throwing your hair upside down and then twisting it into this cotton towel. And then you go with your hands all to get your hair dry and then your hair is completely tangled. And you're pulling your hair out for no reason. Now, is all of your hair gonna fall out if you do that once? Absolutely. No. But if you did it twice, what would happen then? This, I did it twice. This, no, I'm just Putting your hair through all that stress for absolutely no benefit at all is really silly. So let's just get you a new habit to have much better hair. I know you think of washing your hair in the shower and then doing your hair as two separate things, but it's really much better if you do your hair right after you get out of the shower, especially because all the moisture that your conditioner put in your hair is leaking out until you seal it with your leave-in conditioner. So knowing that you're on the clock as soon as you get out of the shower, I'd really like you to get a microfiber towel. They're super cheap on Amazon. And then instead of using your towel like some dark age torture device that pulls and twists your hair in all these different directions, you're just going to pat your hair and just move your hands around without 
rubbing the entire towel too and just lightly press into your hair to dab all the water up it's really that easy and for anybody out there who's like chris my hair is sopping wet there's no way i can get it dry just by pressing your hair shouldn't be sopping wet when you step out of the shower you should lightly wring most of the water out before you leave. And after most of the water is in your towel, your hair should be like slightly damp. Not wet, but just damp. And now it's time to put your products in, starting with the Trinity routine. Or if you don't want the hair of your dreams, that's totally fine. You can wing it and get mediocre results. It's okay, moving on. Abusing hairspray. If you've ever seen a celebrity stylist do hair, you'll see them put all this hairspray and all this product into the hair. The smoke and the spray, it's going everywhere and it looks awesome and the crowd is cheering you, watching you like they're gonna come out of a smoke tunnel. But your hair does not think this is awesome. And what most people don't realize is that the celebrity stylist is getting the celebrity ready for something like the Grammys, where they only need their style to stay put for a few hours. And using a ton of product is a good way to make sure that actually happens. But at the same time, a ton of product guarantees you that your hair is going to feel gross and heavy. All those hair sprays and texture sprays loaded up on the hair turns to absolute gunk. You can't run your fingers through it. It gets gummy and gross. And you're gonna have to wash your hair the next day. And that is bad. Don't do that. You wanna wait days before washing your hair again because washing all the time is terrible for your hair. Hate washing my hair. Now, if you're gonna be part of the Super Bowl <laughs> halftime show, go for it. Load up on hairspray. But you never wanna use that much product in your day-to-day -day life because having to wash that gunk out every single night is a huge downside. Whenever I hear a new client in my salon say, no thanks, I don't want hairspray, it makes my hair all producty, I'm like, that client knows their stuff. Once you've felt what it's like to have fresh, clean, bouncy hair, there's no way you're ever gonna go back. It's just that a ton of people have a hard time getting there in the first place, a really hard time. If you have a wedding, go for it. If you're going to a photo shoot, go for it. I totally get it. But loading up on hairspray is the technique from the 80s when they were throwing literally everything they possibly could into their hair. I'm here to invite you to modern hair care where your hair feels soft and good to the touch. So. Come in, come to Modern Hair Care. We'll take good care of you, I promise. The modern way to use hairspray is six seconds maximum. But I don't mean six seconds total, I mean per area. So if you're doing your right side, six seconds max. Your back, six seconds. Left, six seconds. Don't use it up here. If you use it up here, it's just gonna get gunky. There's no point. Moving on. Letting your hair dry out. All right, so after you wash your hair, you should be using a conditioner to add all that moisture back into your hair. You probably notice in the shower, your hair feels super, super moisturized with the conditioner. But then throughout the day, you look down and you're like, my mids are dry, my ends are dry. Why isn't the effect from my conditioner lasting? Because you let your hair dry out. You did, you just did, it's fine. Most people make this mistake every single time. Because unless you're Wonder Woman, your hair is pretty porous. And on top of that, any damage to your hair means it's holes in the outside layer of your hair. And all of this adds up to your hair not wanting to naturally hold on to moisture. Believe it or not, your hair hates you and it's working against you 24 seven. Why do you do that hair? But what if you had a way to force your hair to behave? What if you had something like those leashes that weird parents use to keep their kids under control in a theme park, but for hair? The thing is, you do have a way, and it's way easier and less embarrassing than using a leash. You probably even ran across it on the shelf, or you just kept on shopping and went right past it to buy that new product that you saw somebody hyping on Amazon. And that product didn't work at all, so you threw it under your sink with all the other products that you heard were good on Instagram. So stop doing that. The good stuff, that leash for your hair to make it behave, it's called leave-in conditioner, and it's one of the most basic building blocks of having great hair. It's literally the most important product after shampoo and conditioner. Let's say you are making a hamburger. The leave-in conditioner is so important, it would be like the bun. You can't make a hamburger without a bun. But when it comes to hair, a lot of women are accidentally skipping the bun. And instead, they're going for those silly Instagram products that are basically like fancy truffle sauce. So their hamburger ends up having all this fancy truffle sauce, but it's completely missing the bun. And then they're stuck wondering why their hamburger didn't come out great or why their hair 
doesn't look good. I don't care how fancy your truffle sauce is, you have to get the basics down first. Here's how you use leave-in conditioner. All you're gonna do right after your shower, you're gonna towel dry your hair, like we talked about earlier, before your hair has any chance to dry out. And then you're gonna spray this into your hair, eight to 10 sprays for fine hair, 10 to 12 for medium hair, or 12 to 16 if you have coarse hair. I'm upping my numbers a little bit because I'm trusting that you've been watching videos for a while and you can handle it. And then all you have to do is brush the product through your hair that's it. And if you've never used leave-in conditioner before, this is gonna be the single biggest upgrade to your hair routine. You just wanna make sure that you don't get like a cream because the cream ones are really, really heavy and gross. Get a water-based spray like this Pureology Color Fanatic. It's very good. Moving on. Wasting your conditioner. Everyone thinks, oh, shampoo and conditioner, they're so easy. I got this down, I got the whole hair thing figured out. But if your hair doesn't look the way you want it to, then you don't have the whole thing figured out, so please have an open mind. Most people apply shampoo and conditioner the exact same way everyone did it in the 80s when they had this dry, crispy hair look. And that dry, crispy hair look is not what we're going for. I would never do that to you. If you're stuck, like what product do I use for this or what product do I use for that, and everything is confusing and nothing is working for you, learn the modern way of using shampoo and conditioner first, because a lot of those problems they're just gonna go away. And first off, most people don't use enough conditioner and then they wonder why their hair is so dry, but that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is something that I've had to get onto my stylist about in the past, and it has to do with how long you leave your conditioner on your hair. A lot of the time in a salon setting, we're like, go, 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 and we wanna keep the clients on time and keep things moving. But when the conditioner is just sitting on the hair, it doesn't feel like any real work is getting done, and you kinda of feel like you're wasting your time. So they get really tempted to rinse the conditioner out of the hair way too early so they can just get back to work. And you've probably had that exact same temptation at home, like, conditioner, can't you tell I'm in a rush? Speed it up, homie. But if you don't leave your conditioner in long enough, you're really missing out. If you know what to look for, you can literally feel the difference in your hands in a bad way. My rule for conditioner is two minutes. You wanna leave it on your hair for at least two minutes, although there is some benefit for leaving it on longer than that. And that's why I like this little routine that I'm about to show you so you can get the full benefit of your conditioner, even if you're in a hurry. When you first get in the shower, start with two washes. Yes, two washes. If you're like, two washes, who does two washes? Modern technique. Guys, go watch Former Me in one of my old videos where I teach you how to wash your hair. Anyway, after the second wash, put your conditioner in your hair and let it sit. And while it's burrowing into the hair, doing all the good stuff that it does, you're gonna go ahead and do all your other shower stuff. You may already be doing this, and if you are, you're a genius, congratulations. But I'm a little weird, so what I really like about this is the way that you never have any dirty water coming down to things that are already clean. If you don't care about that type of thing, it's totally cool, but I need you to at least still promise me that you leave your conditioner in long enough for it to do its thing. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. If you're trying to figure out which products would be best for your hair type, remember to check out my recommended product list. It even has a quiz to help you figure out your hair type. Have a good one. I hope you watch another. Take care. This is absolutely baffling. I cannot believe this.